Learning to read is one of the most important accomplishments of a young child's life. Reading is a strong tie that impacts all other areas of learning and helps improve friendships, mental well-being, and even physical health. However, for many, reading is still a hard and challenging experience, and reading success is not as strong as it should be for most students. The classroom is the most important environment to learn to read. However, parents, tutors, and the community can all help a child learn to read. Scarborough's Reading Rope makes it really clear to understand the key strands to reading. Learning to read involves being able to make meaning from print. This involves two key segments of the rope, language comprehension and word recognition. The child needs strong skills in both these areas. Language Comprehension Talking with children starts when they are infants and continues through the school years. Parents and other caregivers can help build literacy by supporting the child's oral language skills. Strong listening and talking skills support reading development. Language comprehension is made up of five individual strands of oral language skills that work together to build a strong reading rope. So a focus on language comprehension can and really should start long, long, long before children begin to read on their own. Talking and reading aloud from really well-written books develops background knowledge, and background knowledge is really important to language comprehension. We want children to be able to have rich vocabularies, lots of knowledge about subjects, and get familiar with what's called academic language. Academic language is that sort of book and school language, not just the daily language of instructions that we give children. It's beautiful language found in books. Also, background knowledge really increases the pleasure, the joy of reading, and it helps kids get interested in really cool, cool stuff. So use books and experiences, family field trips that can build on your child's knowledge. I'll give you an example. When children are really little, they're gonna have animal toys all around the house, and you're starting to help them put words into categories and say, this is a chicken, and this chicken is an animal who lives on a farm. Then you might start to sing to them, Old MacDonald had a farm, or introduce them to a baby board book that shows all kinds of interesting animals again, and it's deepening their knowledge about farm and all the things that they could find on a farm. When they get to school, their teacher will introduce Brown Bear, Brown Bear, and as they get even older, there's nothing more wonderful than seeing a child discover either through their parent reading aloud or them reading to themselves a beautiful book like Charlotte's Web. And it means so much more when you understand what kinds of farm animals can be found in a farm. So let's be sure that we're building background knowledge every day through the books we read and the things we do and the important talk that we have with our children. Vocabulary includes all the words in a language used to communicate and understand in our world. Vocabulary helps children understand when they're listening and when they're reading, but it also helps them show what they know when speaking and when writing. When we learn a new word, what we're doing is adding that word to our word bank, which is our personal dictionaries. Listening to stories and family talk are great ways to build children's vocabulary, and that sets the foundation for reading. So let's consider what happens when a child is reading a book and they come across a word like rip. The first thing they're going to do is take that word apart into individual sounds. R, I, P. And then they're going to blend them together, rip. If the child recognizes that word as one that they've heard before, that they've used many times, it's more likely that they're going to recognize it in the book and they're going to understand it. You can help your child learn new words by doing some of these. And remember, you can do them in any language. 
So talk about what you're doing and what you're saying. Use new words and explain them or define them. Comment on what your child is doing, what they're looking at, what they're playing with. Name some of the things they're interested in. You can get down on their level and imitate what they're saying and then add words, expanding on what they already know, and read books together. Language follows a set of rules. For instance, word order affects meaning. Consider the sentence, the dog chased the cat versus the cat chased the dog. The words are the same, but the order is different, and it changes the meaning. We can also have the same word order, but a different meaning, like in the dog will chase the cat, or the dog is chasing the cats. Finally, language structures also include words like before, because, and meanwhile, which can be a huge signal about the meaning of the sentence. When children have better knowledge of words, phrases, and sentences, and how they work together, this can really help their reading comprehension. Reading books with children helps them gain knowledge. Books often include words that children don't hear in everyday conversation, like the dinosaur gnashed his teeth. There's also a greater variety of sentence structures in books. For example, the passive voice, like the dog was chased by the cat, or things with clauses, like the dog who ate the sandwich is hiding. It's really important to read with children from a young age to provide them with the exposure to the language of books. This is especially important to pre-readers and struggling readers to give them exposure to rich language because they may not get this in everyday conversation. When we are understanding spoken language, we are not memorizing words exactly as they are said in the exact order they are being said. We are creating an image or a mental model of what is being said. This involves using our background knowledge, vocabulary, and knowledge about sentence structure to make sense of all the details that are sometimes not even mentioned directly. This is verbal reasoning. Verbal reasoning is the ability to understand language beyond the words spoken. For example, if someone says, the boys got a new pet, they found it in a kennel, and it was barking, they named him Rover, you would infer from this that they were talking about a dog. Verbal reasoning also involves figurative language, language that is not the typical meaning. For example, you could say, it was a sauna in the house today. A child would need to understand that a sauna is a very hot place and then understand that you are describing the room as very hot. Understanding also draws on one's background knowledge of hot and cold places as well as what a house might typically feel like. Helping your child understand when information is implied and not directly stated will help their ability to make connections and inferences, essential skills for many school subjects including reading, science and social studies. To help your child at home, you can play games such as 20 questions, is it an animal, does it live in the ocean, is it big. To practice inferential thinking, you might say things like, Joan looks tired today, how can we tell? It looks like it's cold outside, how do we know? When a baby puts a book in their mouth, a toddler flips through the pages, or a preschooler uses a clipboard to take your order in a pretend restaurant, they are practicing early literacy, print awareness, and print knowledge. They are learning that written language has meaning. This is the concept of print, and all of literacy builds on this knowledge. Skilled readers learn to think about whether the writing is instructional or meant to entertain whether it shares information or it's a story. There are many ways to promote literacy knowledge at home and in your community. Sing, share stories, especially in your home language. Tell the story of your family. When you read to your child, show them that a book has a front and a back. And in English, we read from left to right and from top to bottom. There are pictures and graphics that help to tell the story. And in some books, there are headings and chapters and page numbers. There's so much to explore just by looking at the book. When you read to your child, you can help them to notice letters, numbers, and punctuation. Show your child that print is all around them. Print is everywhere. Signs, buildings, labels, posters, calendars, and even shopping lists. 
We can also introduce children to different genres of books. Picture books, chapter books, cookbooks, newspapers, magazines, and so much more. Come and visit your local public library for free opportunities to experience books and programs and borrow as many as you like. Word recognition. When we read, we are solving about four to five mini word recognition puzzles each second. Word recognition is the other large segment of the reading rope. Once a child has strong word recognition skills, they can see the word and then know precisely how it is spoken and what it might mean. Word recognition is made up of three individual strands and practice is key to make this segment of the rope strong. When a child sings a song like banana fana fo fana me my mo banana banana, they are using their oral language skills to hear, identify, and manipulate sounds in words, syllables, and even parts of words. This is called phonological awareness, and it's an important skill that children begin to develop even before they start to formally learn to read and write in school. In fact, you can do activities at home with your child to develop these skills. Doing activities like making up silly call and response phrases, see you later alligator, or in a while crocodile. Challenging family members to come up with as many words as possible that start with the first sound in their name. So k for Colton, he likes cats, cars, and caramels. Or make up silly sentences together. We might move mommy's magnets to her mirror. Or Sally sits sadly on the stool singing songs. Reading rhyming books or teaching nursery rhymes, kid songs or short poems all build those sound skills. And remember, these activities, they can be done in any language. But the most important thing, make sure that you have fun with your child as you engage in language play. The English alphabet has 26 letters, and these letters are used in different combinations to match with the 44 English sounds. This is the code for literacy. Children need to be explicitly and systematically taught the code for reading and writing. For example, the letter C says k, the letter H says h, but together C and H say ch. This is known as phonics. Teaching children the letters and sounds in an organized way is most effective when introduced early in their education. Successful decoding happens when a child uses this knowledge of letters and sounds to accurately sound out a word. Not only do children learn the letters and sounds, but they also need to learn to blend these sounds together. For example, children need to know that S says S, H says H, I says I, P says P, but together S and H team up to say SH, I, P. They learn that they can blend SH, I, P. The letters each have meaning on their own, but they team up to make a word together. When the child learns the code of these letters and the sounds and then practices blending them together and breaking them apart, sh, i, p, breaking it apart, they learn why they are learning this code. It will help them read and write anything. This is how you can help at home. Practice naming the letters of the alphabet and tell their sound or sounds. This is a B, B says B. This is an S, S says S. Follow the words with your finger from left to right. Touch and say as you read them. Sh, i, p. Practice, practice, practice. Beginning read readers may read slowly. Give your child time to decode the words and avoid jumping in too quickly. Sight recognition is not memorizing pages and pages of words. Sight recognition is what skilled readers do. Skilled readers see a word and they automatically know the sounds and the meaning of the word. Skilled readers are fast, they're automatic, they're precise, and they're articulate because of their sight recognition ability. All written words when practiced become sight words. Occasionally, a reader will come across a word they don't automatically recognize. Then they'll have to draw on their word reading strategies to determine the pronunciation and the meaning of the word. 
These are the same decoding strategies that beginning readers use to figure out the correct pronunciation of a word. A beginning reader may have to use these strategies more than once, and maybe a lot of times, before the word becomes recognizable by sight. So what are these strategies? How can you help your kids and beginning readers? Apply the knowledge of the decoding strand. Use what they already know about letters and sounds. Use known words like mountain to predict an unknown word like fountain. Start to recognize the larger letter combinations like T-I-O-N, shun, I-N-G, ing, U-M-P, ump, and those will help them to become even more efficient. This is the strand where practice is key. When children read well, they have a strong, durable foundation for learning in every topic. Reading is critical to nearly all learning and takes up a considerable part of every school day. At home, parents can read with their children for pleasure. Listening to books for fun can help develop motivation, comprehension, and strong oral language skills in any language. A strong reading rope helps children open the door to possibilities and adventures that go far beyond their own experiences.